Hello and welcome back and in today's lesson we're going to be going over currency exchange rates. Now different countries use different monetary units and or different currencies. It is important when traveling to consider exchange rates or the value of one monetary unit compared to another. So when you are traveling around through different countries um, you may find that they use a different currency in that country. So often you'll have to go to the bank and exchange the money you have for the currency of where you are at. Um, so this will come into play as we go through the examples here. The exchange rates fluctuate from day to day and from currency exchange to another. Exchanges set, by, uh, set a buying rate and a selling rate for the currency exchange and these rates are different from each other. A buying rate is the rate at which the currency exchange buys money from the customer. So if you were selling it to the bank, it's what they're going to buy it from you at. And a selling rate is the rate at which currency exchange sells money to its customers. So if you're in another country and you need to exchange your money for a different currency, you'd be looking at the selling rate. Now it says that... Um, the exchange rates compared to the Canadian dollar bill are on page 45. I will be supplying you with all of the currency exchange rates in the questions. For example one, on a specific date the selling rate of a Danish krone compared to the Canadian dollar is 0 0.221778. How many kroner will you receive for $500 Canadian? The the plural for krone is kroner. So what we have to look at first here is setting up our fraction. So we have krone on top and Canadian dollars on the bottom. If we look at the exchange rate that they list above for us, um, when compared to the Canadian dollar, the krone is 0 0.221778. So that means for one Canadian dollar, we're at 0 0.221778. So we're starting to set up our fractions here. The thing we want to figure out is how much will we get for 500 Canadian. So remember Canadian is on the bottom. So I suggest always setting this up first so you can keep track of which is going where. So we have 500 Canadian dollars and we're trying to figure out how much we're going to get in exchange. So first thing we need to do is set up our cross multiplication and that means we're going to get 1x equal to 500 multiplied by 0 0.221778 which will give us $110.89. Now remember again when you're dealing with dollar amounts you're going to two decimal places. So for our answer for exchanging 500 Canadian for um, the Danish krone, we would end up with $110.89. In example two, if an item in Sweden costs 129.95 kroner and the exchange rate is 0 0.164842 between the krona and the Canadian dollar, Approximate then calculate the value in Canadian dollars. Well, we're going to look at calculating right here. Um, the first thing that we need to look at is we have kroner and we also have Canadian dollars. So set up your fraction so you can keep track of what's going on top and what's going on the bottom. The next thing we need to do is write down the dollar amount of what we have. So we have 129.95 kroner over, well, we're trying to figure out how much Canadian we're going to have, is equal to 
our exchange rate uh, between Corona and Canadian dollars is 0 0.164842. So the important thing is the ex it's the exchange rate between Corona and Canadian dollars, which means you have your one on the top and your 0 0.164842. For two on the bottom. Now that we have this set up, we can do our cross multiplication. Now that'll give us 1x equal to 129.95 multiplied by 0 0.164842, which will give us a dollar amount in Canadian of $21.42. Remember to write your unit down. In example three, Anne works for an automotive part distributor and visits Switzerland to source new products. She asked a bank teller to convert some currency for her trip. On a given day, the bank's selling rate of the Swiss franc compared to the Canadian dollar for a uh, dollar is 1.0501 and the buying rate is 1.0213. Remember, there's a difference between the selling rate and also the buying rate. So that's going to come into play. We're going to have to put both into these equations when we're solving for the examples below, but we have to make sure we distinguish which one we're going to use. How many Swiss francs would Anne receive for 400 Canadian? So we have Swiss francs and we also have Canadian. So I'm just going to set up our fraction so we can keep track of what's on top and what's on the bottom. It says we have 400 Canadian. So that goes on the bottom here. And we're trying to figure out how many Swiss francs we're going to get. The next thing that we have to look at is, are we using the buying rate or the selling rate? Well, we're trying to convert money and get that money from the bank. So it's what the bank is going to sell it at. So we need to use the 1.0501. That sets up our cross multiplication so that, so that one Swiss franc is compared to Canadian dollars of 1.0501. So one Swiss franc is over the 1.0501. Put your equals in the middle. Now you've set up your cross multiplication, which is going to get us 1.0501x equals 400. Next thing that we need to do is get x by itself. So we divide by the 1.0501 on both sides. And we get x by itself is equal to 380.92 Swiss francs. So we took our 400 Canadian and we got 380.92 Swiss francs. In example B, it says, if Anne sold them back to the bank the same day, how much would she receive? So we're taking this dollar amount and we're now selling it right back to the bank. So we have, again, our Swiss francs and our Canadian, and we have 380 0.92 Swiss francs over the set amount of Canadian we want to figure out we're getting. And we now have to use the buying rate because this is what they're going to be buying it from us at. So the buying rate will be 1 over 1.0213. We have our cross multiplication set up. So we'll have x multiplied by 1, which gets us x equal to 
multiplied by 1.0213 and we'll get $389.03. And that's Canadian now. So we originally had 400, we converted it to Swiss francs and converted it right back into Canadian. And we, we had 400 and it is now only $389.03. So converting back and forth, you're going to lose money along the way. So it's important that you know exactly how much money you want to convert so that you're not losing money to the conversion. And that's our next part of the question is what would her net loss be? Well, she started with $400 Canadian and now only has $389.03. So 400 divided by the 380.92 gets you $10.97 that she lost. Now, this isn't a huge dollar amount, but if you are working for a company using large dollar amounts converting back and forth, you can lose a lot of money if you're not paying attention to the conversions and if you're converting too much money and then having to convert it back. So with $400, you're losing about $11 um, just from converting and converting back again. So it's important to pay attention to that while you're traveling or while you're working in business. That'll bring us to the end of the lesson for today. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class or send me a message on Teams.